Hi, I'm Chef Gail Sokol and welcome to my kitchen. Today is a tip day. I'm going to show you how to form the perfect yeasted loaf bread. A lot of people don't know how to do it well and they end up with humps and bumps and holes. And today I'm going to put a filling into my uh, loaf bread, but I'm going to form it the same way as I would a regular white bread, whole wheat bread, any type of bread that's going to be baked in a loaf and show you how to form it perfectly. But before we get started, I want you to click that notification button. I don't want you to miss any of my tips or videos, so become a subscriber. I really like having you in my kitchen. So this is the tip for you. So most loaf pans um, are about nine by five by three. This is a typical loaf pan that you might bake uh, a, a yeasted bread in. I've sprayed it with nonstick cooking spray. And sometimes they'll say, oh, you want it to be 11 by 17 or whatever the dimensions are. I usually forget it. I don't even look. So I let the pan guide me. So here I have a raisin bread, a yeasted raisin bread that I'm going to put a cinnamon filling in. And I'm going to use my fingers to make a rectangle. And I'm actually going to form the rectangle only to the length of the pan, only to the length of the pan in a rectangle. I don't use any flour. There is no flour. The flour would just make the dough drier, and you're going to end up with a drier loaf. All right? So I just want it the length of the pan, and I'm going to stop. Okay? I'm going to stop. I have a filling, so I'm going to show you how you would fill a dough like this. If it's not filled, you would just roll it up. But right now I'm going to fill this. So I'm just going to make, I'm making a, a cinnamon swirl bread. I'm just going to put a little water on the top so that the cinnamon sugar adheres. I have a great video on how to make this so you can tune into that video and watch. All right. So I'm just going to load up my filling. If you didn't have a filling and this was just a white bread, you would forget this part. You would not have a filling at all, and that's fine. But I still would form it the exact same way. Okay? So now, reinforce your rectangle. Use your thumbs and roll away from you. And what you're going to do is roll it into a coil, a very tight coil. So you're going to roll it tight, all right? Almost like when you make cinnamon rolls, but this is one bread. So you're just going to pull back and keep going and rolling, pull back. Make sure that your lines are lined up so that you don't go away from the line of the rectangle. Pull back. As you pull back, you will prevent any holes so that when you cut into your bread, you won't have any gaps, air gaps. Nobody wants air gaps. Nobody wants a hole in their bread. Keep pushing. See what I'm doing? I'm pushing to maintain that rectangular line. I'm pushing to maintain that, and I'm going to keep rolling. Do not add any flour at this point. Your dough should feel really nice, slightly sticky, but it should have risen beautifully. Um, and this, and it can be a white, like I said, a white bread dough could be a whole wheat bread dough. You can just pull that out so that the edges meet. You're going to get over, roll it over, push back a little, come back. You see your seams, pinch, pinch, pinch those seams together. Don't worry if they're way, uh, you know, not perfectly sealed together. That's fine. And then just sort of shape it. This is the time to shape it. Don't shape it. Once it's in the pan, it's in the pan because this has to undergo another rising, another proofing. All right. So have my pan. It is no longer than the length of the pan. Perfect. You're going to lift it up by the ends. You're going to lift it up by the ends. You're going to let the middle drop gently in, and then you're going to take the ends and push down like you're tucking it into bed, all right? And then you're just going to arrange it so that it is centered, centered, and you can see that it is centered, 
all right? Our baby is in the bed. I'm going to cover it with plastic wrap, and then I'm going to let it rise in a warm area um, until it's doubled in volume, and then you're ready to bake it off depending on what recipe you're making. So I hope you found this tip helpful. Um, I have found this to be just invaluable, this particular uh, procedure in making the best loaf breads you can ever make. Become a subscriber. I'll see you next time.